Uh, I'm Ken Hinckley. Um, I manage the Epic Research Group here at Microsoft Research. Um, quick plug for my group. We do cool stuff. Uh, I'll give you a quick sampling here. Um, for today's talk, I wanted to focus on something I call the seen but unnoticed. So these can be behaviors that occur between people, um, but particularly here I'm talking about our mundane interactions with physical objects. You approach, you approach your device, you grasp it, you pick it, up, pick it up, you might angle it towards someone or yourself, you put it down. Um, these are things that sort of happen every day and can be sensed by devices. Um, but first, you kind of have to pay yourself to, tr to pay attention so that you can observe these seen but unnoticed things in everyday life. Uh, and it might just be during an everyday walk in the park, right? So, um, so for example, take a closer look here at the woman at the center who's reading a book. Um, and note how her book sort of carves out this cocoon um, with its two angled pages and the little wor world that carves out um, with within. Uh, and this is just one example, but it shows how the posture and the placement of mundane objects like her book uh, or our, our digital devices can shape personal space uh, and also steer the attention of other people. Uh, so let me give you a few examples um, that point to many of these overt attributes, uh, and they're totally practical uh, for modern devices to sense. Um, but of course, like all proper research, this line of work began with, anyone want to venture a guess where it started? Oh, come on, you guys are brilliant. No ideas? Failure. Failure. Okay, good guess, but wrong. Uh, begin with a cat. <laughs> uh, this is Mr. Cleo, who's my favorite cat ever. Um, and he's thinking about maybe getting off the bed uh, on this rainy Saturday way back in 1999. Uh, and I was playing with the sort of fancy mobile devices of the day. Uh, and it struck me that, um, you know, compared to my cat, my device was not so impressive. Uh, it's completely unaware of its environment. Whereas my cat's aware of sounds and objects. Um, it's, you know, my device is totally oblivious to my presence. My cat knows if I walk in the room. It likes to be petted. Um, and overall, the experience with the device is selfish and inconsiderate. Uh, and of course, with my cat, uh, well, he is a cat. <laughs> um, so I wanted to show you a little video that came out of this. What I have here from the year 1999 is the Casio PIE100 mobile computer. It has, this one's a little bit unusual because I've been doing some work on it. It has some strange sensors attached to it. Uh, and in the top, you have all these funky sensors. These were carefully crafted in place by ripping out the compact flash slot and throwing it in the trash. Picking up and looking at the device turns on the power. The sensors respond only when you are holding the device and looking at it. So if you push the device out of the way, it will not turn on. Similarly, the device will not turn on while in a briefcase or purse, if, even if it's being shaken around. The user can set the display mode simply by turning the device. Whoa, I'm not sure what happened there. I think there's been a bit of a glitch in the time stream, but bear with me here. So I can pick it up. Uh, and when I do so, it automatically turns itself on, tilt the device, oh, and it rotates. Hey, that's, that's kind of cool. Well, how'd that animation get so good? I don't remember doing that in 1999 here. All right, so anyway, it shows, shows you sort of the long history of some of these projects at Microsoft Research. Uh, and we have a bit of fun, too. Um, more, more recently, uh, you might have seen our latest device announcements. We're doing some cool stuff with dual screen devices. This also has a long history at Microsoft Research. Uh, and in particular, I want to talk about a bit about sensing some of the basic device postures that can transform experiences in these kind of devices. Um, so here, back in 2009, I built this device called the Codex Dual Screen Tablet Computer. Uh, and in particular, it explored some of the physical affordances of actually having these two hinge displays together. Um, so I have another short video on this. Uh, and I apologize to my interpreter that I talk so fast in these videos. <laughs> the Codex is a prototype dual screen tablet computer. A custom detente hinge between the displays affords setting up the device in a variety of postures. Embedded sensors automatically adjust the displays and the software functionality to suit the resulting task context whether that means different arrangements for individual work, or postures that afford collaborating with another user. The small folding form factor makes the codex extremely mobile and versatile. Back in his office, Joe uses his codex as an electronic scrapbook. He does a quick search and starts to explore what's there. Joe browses the photos side by side with his notes then he grabs a clipping, all without interrupting his primary note-taking task. Overall, the two screens of the codex afford a separation of concerns in reading versus writing, 
public versus private, and other partitions of task roles and views. The facile transitions between usage contexts via sensed postures enable a rich set of possibilities without undue burden to the user. All right, so that's just another quick sampling of uh, some of the fun products we've done in this space. Um, I wanted to move on to one final example here. Um, this one's a little bit more recent. Um, it's a project we did exploring what we call pre-touch, uh, which is sensing touch around and above mobile devices. Um, so here again is one of these, you know, a bit like the woman holding the book. This is another sort of mundane scene you've probably seen a million times. Maybe not in a Windows phone, granted, but um, on a mobile device. Uh, and it's just, it's a hand holding a device. Um, but if you ever really noticed what people are doing in this kind of context, um, how they use their hands, um, there's, there's a lot of information here hiding in plain sight. Uh, so ask yourself, what does it really mean to touch a device? Uh, and even such a mundane scene like this, it has extraordinary clues to context and the user's intent. Uh, so let me show you some examples of how we can take advantage of that. We explore pre-touch sensing for mobile interaction. This emerging modality uses a self-capacitive touchscreen to sense multi-touch above the screen, as well as grip around the outer edges of the device. For example, our prototype video player has an ad-lib interface that spontaneously presents interactive elements just in the nick of time. Initially, there is no interface. The video is the focus of attention. But when the hand approaches, this indicates a change in context, and so the controls fade in. Yet, the interface recedes into the background when the user moves out of proximity. However, if the user holds the device one-handed, only a subset of the controls come forward, and in a manner particularly suited to the thumb. While holding the device in the other hand brings the controls to that side instead. With the second thumb, a richer set of options becomes available. Taken as a whole, our exploration of pre-touch hints that the evolution of mobile touch may still be in its infancy, with many possibilities, unbounded by the flatland of the touchscreen, yet to explore. All right, so that gives you a sense of how, you know, even just holding a device, there's all these sort of subtle little micro contexts or sort of um, little contexts that you can pick up and use that to adapt the device uh, to the situation. Um, so I've talked a bit about this notion of the scene but unnoticed in mobile devices. Um, and this is natural vocabulary of everyday gestures that are hidden in plain sight. So remember when you're kind of walking around the world, remember to pay attention to what people are doing, their behaviors, these little things, uh, and open your eyes to these opportunities uh, in everyday life. Thanks very much.